TikTok is under fire in the U.S. The president just banned the app for federal agencies. Now the House Foreign Affairs Committee is pushing a bill to allow that ban to expand to all of the U.S., the more than 100 million Americans using TikTok. Indiana's attorney general has been has seen TikTok as a threat for some time now, has even taken action. And Attorney General Todd Rakita joins us now in studio. Attorney General, thank you so much for being here with us today. You Your office has already filed two lawsuits against TikTok, and this was some time ago, uh, December, I believe. Yep. And the first one is we just talked about, uh, one after or, or protect kids, the other to protect adults. Right. Talk about this. And you just released a statement saying that you're going to file an injunction after right. today's uh, so we'll be in court in uh, Fort Wayne uh, tomorrow uh, looking for that injunction to stop uh, TikTok's use in the state of Indiana which will be a, effectively use uh, here in the entire United States we're gonna see how that goes of course but uh, the, fo the point is is that kids are being attacked by this app it's a Chinese app it's run by the Chinese Communist Party uh, the Chinese version of the app, their kids get taught STEM education on TikTok. You know what our kids get taught when they open up TikTok? Within 30 seconds, they can learn how to become a stripper. They can learn how to get alcohol, drugs, fentanyl to kill them. So this is a direct attack on our greatest asset, our kids. And as parents, as adults, we owe a duty to them to protect them. And we ought to do it. One easy thing you can do right now, right tonight during a commercial break, go to your kid's TikTok app and delete it. And by the way, delete your own because the Chinese Communist Party, what they're doing to their kids, they're doing to you in the sense that they're taking our data and they're using it against us. This is so pervasive though. So, I mean, I just said 100 million Americans using it. A lot of kids, a lot of parents allow their kids to use this. They don't see it as a threat. They say they're not seeing all the things you're seeing on that. How is TikTok different from other apps? They're very well maybe other apps. It's not just it's it, TikTok. Uh, that's the most pervasive form. That's the, most, the one we have the most evidence on. If you go to our lawsuits, we're not just making up claims or accusations. Uh, we have evidence that shows exactly what they did. In fact, the lawsuits had to be redacted in parts uh, for various reasons, but because there's such sensitive information in them, we did our research. Okay. <clears throat> now, well, a lawsuit, you said it will keep it out of Indiana. Will a lawsuit do that? Keep it. I mean, eventually that's the goal. I mean, our goal is to get this backed up, get them to change their ways, get them out of the state, get them out of this country. And if this is a baseball game, you know, for sure. That's why I say okay. we'll see how the preliminary injunction goes. We're in the bottom of the first inning probably. And we got a lot of ball to play yet. It'll take a while to get through yeah. the process. But again, parents right now can win this battle by deleting TikTok off of their phones and their kids phone and at the very least if they if they hear this just research it find out about yeah. it and then they can and make we're not the alone I mean the federal and the state of Indiana right. government has banned our our own employees from using it for fear of the data that's being stolen right, right? Chinese are doing this they're using spy balloons uh, this is a way into everyone's uh, individual space uh, without firing a shot. Let's talk about another bill that um, is in the news today. Both chambers passed a bill to overturn a Labor Department a rule allowing mm. investment managers. Now this is, gets kind of uh, 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 confusing for folks who aren't familiar with investments, but this allows them to use ideological factors such as environmental, social and governing uh, investing rather than just return yeah. on investment. Uh, allowing uh, financial advisors to use that to manage people's money. You have already um, filed, yeah. I believe, a lawsuit. Right. Or you joined a lawsuit to keep yeah, this we're from helping, happening. Yeah, we're helping lead that one, too. Why is I this so Kentucky's important? I believe Kentucky's on that, too. My good friend Dan Cameron's doing a great job with the ESG stuff as well. This is very important because this affects $12 trillion. Most of us have 401ks. Mm -hmm. uh, the way 401ks have been set up under the federal tax code is that the Department of Labor uh, mo monitors this and what the Department of Labor is doing is saying you know what you as an employer like this TV station employing you I'm sure you have your own 401k doesn't have to rely on the fiduciary duty it has to find the best rate of return for the 401k offerings right. it gives you it can go off into ESG land it can focus now your employer under the DOL rule can focus on all kinds of other things mm. the climate how many women are on a company board or, or, or those of color, those kinds of things, not worrying about the financial return for you. Mm -hmm. And we think that's wrong. I'm glad to see the Senate and the House did what they did. The right. president, however, already said it's going to veto it. Well, the, pr and the president the White House says that it's not mandated. It's, it's just something that financial advisors have used. And many, um, uh, many support this and have been using this. Yeah, but the question is, do you? You want the, you want the largest financial return. 
uh, generally. And if you don't, there are products that you can use that focus on other things. Uh, but the concern is that big woke corporations, so not necessarily this TV station, I don't want to do, put them under that rubric, but big woke corporations who have demonstrated their misbeliefs in every other sphere are going to use that against their own employees now. Okay. All right. Well, let's move on to, uh, we've recently learned that you're the subject of an investigation by the Indiana Supreme Court Dis Disciplinary Commission. Um, your attorney indicated this is in regards to comments made by Dr. Caitlin, or about your comments made about Dr. Caitlin Bernard, the Indianapolis OBGYN who performed uh, an abortion on a 10-year-old rape victim. Do you want to walk back any of those statements that you made about well, the doctor I think, at this no. point? Well, I think, mean, no. The, 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 the thing is, and I'm, and I'm, I'm glad people are focusing on, on really the, the issue here, and the, the issue is, isn't abortion or rape uh, that's that's not the problem. The problem is a doctor violated her patient's privacy by going to the news media with her story. And that should hurt and alarm all of us. Any one of us who have a doctor, and I think that's all of us, uh, should be concerned about that. And that's what we're going to find out. The fact of the matter, though, in terms of uh, the disciplinary commission, um, a lot of those complaints, as, as you read them, are based on misinformation in the news. Mm -hmm. Uh, many don't understand that I have several avenues of non-confidential non investigative authority that I can go down and that I have in fact used. Okay. Also, many people miss the, um, uh, the point that I have the duty to inform as a statewide elected official, I have a duty to inform under the law about what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. That's a transparency protection for voters and taxpayers. And so that plays into this too. So um, I'm always happy and willing to learn. I want nothing more than to be the best uh, attorney general I can be for the state of Indiana, which I love. So that's what we're going to do. I'm cooperating, of course, with anybody who has questions and uh, we'll continue to do that throughout the process. Now, uh, to be clear, Dr. Bernard never used this, the um, victims, the rape victims' identity at all in what she uh, released. Do you think that matters for patient privacy? Uh, the, the point of patient privacy in HIPAA is that you can't identify your patient. But you, you can't go in, and, and you cannot go and expose that. There was that. no, there was no identifying. Days, there was, and within two days of all this happening, Univision, and other outlets were at that little girl's door where she lives without, and without exposing the name. And, that's and unfortunate. And I, I, it's also a violation of patient privacy, which is the highest, highest trust relationship you have with your doctor. If you can't trust your doctor, then all the other things that we're concerned about in healthcare these days goes right down the tubes. Because well, I, I know that, that her employer, IU Health, said that she did not violate any well, regulations except, or laws. Except it's not IU's job to say that. I, it's an I, employer, I, and I assume that they would follow HIPAA standards. Or they're liable for it. So, of course, they have an interest in saying she followed HIPAA because they're, they're liable for any violations thereof. Well, let me ask you this. You know, your predecessor did have a disciplinary suspension placed on him by this same group. Is this something that we should be concerned about? We're concerned about what he did? No, no, the fact that it happened to him, and now you're up for... Well, I think to the extent... Um, you know, there's a weaponization of all kinds of institutions these days. Even the Supreme attorneys. Court Disciplinary Commission? Against People can file anything. The Indiana Supreme Court Disciplinary Commission like is a Like I said, anybody can file anything for any reason. Okay. So if you understand the politics of the world these days, and certainly in the state of Indiana and, Tennis, and Kentucky and Tennessee and any other state, mm -hmm. you understand how institutions can be weaponized. Now, if you're kind of trying to compare me to what the last Attorney General did, groping women, and me saying something <laughs> to the news media? I am you, not okay. comparing the two. I'm just okay, saying I just want to be sure. No, okay. I'm just saying that you both have been brought up under this yeah. disciplinary commission, and they're being investigated. In my case, it's very unfortunate. And I but will again, say this. I do it, know that thousands, case, they, thousands of complaints, and a very small number of them actually move on to that point where they are uh, suspended. Yeah, and we'll see if it moves on in my case, too. Okay, and we'll keep an eye on that. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, I appreciate the time, and I wish we had more. We have plenty of other things to talk about. Your office has been extremely active in um, uh, taking care of Hoosiers here, and we appreciate you coming in today and talking about you it. You bet. I'm glad to be here, and we're happy to be back. Thank you. Attorney General Todd Rokita, thank you so much for being here.